Hello, and welcome to my character guide for The Engineer. I've decided to change the titles of these videos to character guides from build guides because as some of you have stated, there are many different ways to play each character and many different items that perform well on each class. The simple fact that RNG dictates a large portion of each run means a build in the usual sense will rarely happen. As in, the likelihood of you getting the same items in exactly the same quantities during different runs will rarely, if ever, happen. So from here on out, rather than most of the video covering specific items and their synergies with the class, I will do a mixture of general playstyle tips that showcase how to more efficiently play the character, combined with talking about which items synergize well with the class. I will always conclude each character guide with some footage of gameplay. Alright, that being said, let's get into the Engineer Character Guide. Instead of starting first with items, I want to begin with the disclaimer. If you are a new player, do not start playing with the engineer. Okay, this may be a bit controversial, but hear me out. This doesn't mean he's a not a noob friendly character. In fact, he's probably the easiest character to play, but that's the issue. The problem isn't that he is the easiest character to play, it's why he's the easiest. And that's not because of his big damage values being higher or his defense being greater or his mobility being faster. He's the easiest character because he doesn't teach you to play the game. Every other character in Risk of Rain 2 requires you to more or less move around the map target the most efficient enemies to kill, and then buy upgrades to increase your power and kill more enemies faster. That's the general gist of the game. However, in the simplistic design comes deep and complex systems, most notably one called pattern recognition. The game isn't as easy as point and shoot at everyone you see. You'll learn to get behind cover or dodge in a serpentine pattern whenever you see the red beam of a golem or titan targeting you. You'll learn to kill jellyfish before they explode, else you won't receive any money for their death. You'll learn to kite back from imps to avoid their massive close range damage, etc, etc. But most importantly, you'll learn these very specific situations interact with one another and how those combinations change the way you play. The problem lies in that the engineer has a different combination of those situations from every other character and the reason is due to his turrets. Learning the game on the engineer doesn't always make you better at the game. A lot of the experience that you gain while playing him is lost in translation when moving over to another character because of his turrets. As in, playing the engineer doesn't make you better at the game, it makes you better at the engineer. Now, this is not to say you can't learn the game on him, or that you will somehow be as bad as when you played your very first run if you play only the engineer and then choose a different class. No, that's not what I'm saying. If you want to play the engineer, that's not a bad thing. Go right ahead. All I'm saying is that the experience you'll get while playing him is fundamentally different from that of everyone else. So to sum this whole disclaimer up, I strongly recommend choosing a different character as a new player, at least for like your first 10 runs. Just get a feel for the fundamental game mechanics before moving to the engineer. All right, this probably sounds like I don't like the engineer and that's actually not the case at all. He's a very fun class to play. To prove it, let's get into some of the general play style of the engineer. As stated in that disclaimer, the engineer revolves around his turrets. They are your lifeblood, literally if you have infusions. <laughs> I'll get details on why they are so good in the item section, not here. You can only place two turrets at any given time and store a maximum of two. They take 30 seconds to recharge, but do recharge even if your current two are alive and placed, meaning you can place two turrets, wait a minute, and immediately have two more turrets to place whenever you want. The newest turret will overwrite the oldest, so keep that in mind if you're trying to hold down a specific area. Understanding when and where to place your turrets is essential. Generally in the early game, you want to few mobs to spawn while you continue moving and scouting the map and then place a turret behind you and let it take them out. You should always have at least one turret off cooldown when spawning the teleporter boss and preferably your second very close to being up if not already. If you have any bustling fungus, which we will go over in more detail in the items section, placing the turrets very close to one another is ideal because the AoE healing from the fungus overlaps and will essentially double in effectiveness for each turret. On top of that, it makes them harder to kill and thus stay alive longer, being able to pump out more damage. And if you have many stacks of this fungus, the AoE on this thing is massive. I'll throw in a clip here of how big it can get. I think this is like with 20 something stacks. It is disgustingly big. Another big tip for the engineer is that you can essentially sprint and auto attack with no penalty, much like the hunter and the mercenary. I'll put up a clip of me doing it now, but to do this, all you have to do is begin charging your auto attack by holding left click, and as soon as the animation begins, the X crosshair begins expanding, press your sprint key. If you do it correctly, you should continue hearing the attack charge up, but the crosshair will now be the carrot, which is the icon when you're sprinting. You will continue sprinting under the same conditions as every other character. Basically, if you use a skill or walk backwards, the sprint will end. Otherwise, you can charge the attack to max stacks, let it sit for a second if you need to aim, and then release. You will actually still be sprinting after the initial attack launches, but it doesn't last for very long. So as soon as you see the X crosshair pop back up, this means you are not sprinting. So just repeat the process. Hold left click, wait a millisecond for the animation and sound to start, 
then sprint. If you do this as efficiently as possible, and it's really not that hard to do, you just need to practice for a few minutes, there is very, very little downtime of sprinting, and thus it's comparable to the Huntress and the Mercenary, in my opinion. Another tip I have for you all is to not be too reliant on your bubble. Yes, it is insanely powerful. Yes, it blocks all projectiles from the outside while simultaneously letting all of your projectiles or any projectiles that are inside go out. However, in the later stages of the game, especially playing around such a small radius is asking to be piled on by enemies. Imps can come out of nowhere and start slashing down if they're elites, especially one or two swings and you're pretty much dead. Titans can place their pillars inside of the bubbles and simply knock you out of them while also dealing a ton of damage. And most importantly, the big boy magma worms don't care about your silly little bubble and they will do their best to sit on top of you in your silly little bubble, which will definitely not be good for your HP bar. The most common way I use the bubble is for a quick block for Titan beams, the wandering vagrants explosion, the queen beetles acid, pretty much any boss attack that is a projectile. However, I really don't stay inside for long due to the the reasons listed above and just use it as a quick block for more than anything. The other very common use of the bubble is to place both of your turrets and then throw the bubble on top of them giving them a great layer of protection. Again, you shouldn't really be in the bubble, just kite around it with sprint and attack like I just went over and you should be good. Finally, a quick tip is to use your mines wisely. They are very good at taking out stacks of melee mobs, so Lemurians, imps, buffaloes, etc. So if you're kiting around for too long and aren't killing things very quickly, as in these melee mobs are stacking up around you, try bunching them up and then tossing your mines into them and they should all pretty much die instantly. The mines are also good at cheesing teleporter bosses as soon as they spawn because bosses are often stacked, especially the later you go. If you have any other big playstyle tips on the fungal boy, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to read them. All right, let's move on to some great item synergies. So as you could probably tell from the intro to this video, bustling fungus is kinda okay on the engineer. In fact, it's absolutely nuts. This is because your turrets gain all of your items. Now, this doesn't always mean they gain the same effects as you from the items. For example, the brittle crown does not work with your turrets. They won't gain you any gold, but they also won't lose you any gold. So pretty pointless. Infusion is another example. If the turrets get the kill, they get the additional HP and not you. Also, any stacks on their infusion do not carry over to a different turret. As in, if the one dies and you replace it, the replacement turret does not get the stacked infusion from the dead one. They start at zero stacks. Other than that, pretty much every item works the same on them as it does on you. And yes, it is absolutely as powerful as that sounds. To get back to the fungus, they essentially have 100% uptime because, well, those little legs don't move them very far. They are always stationary, so the only downtime is the two or so seconds it takes after placing them for the healing effect to activate. Now, the healing itself is amazing, but it's not why this item is so good on the engineer. The reason is because of the wombo combo between the fungus and the Nukahana's opinion. Seriously, if you get just three or four stacks of fungus and get a Nukahana's to drop, you are set. The Nukahana's effect is that it does damage based on the amount you heal. I'll put up the item here on screen so you can read the exact effects, but essentially the more you heal, the more damage it does. Since your turrets are always healing if you have at least one stack of fungus, this item will constantly be shooting out green skulls, which amounts to a very, very consistent damage source. Also, it's irrelevant if the turrets are max HP, so long as you see the green HP restore numbers pop up, they're healing, quote unquote, and thus activating the item. By the way, to unlock the item, you simply have to go to this ledge at the edge of the map in the wetland aspect, which is stage two, jump down to this spot, and then follow the path. Kill the skeleton at the end, and boom, you have the Nukahana's opinion. You should stick to a single player lobby for this, by the way because I've had lobbies where my friends don't get the unlock because I'm the host and I already have the item. So stick to single player and you should be good. If you guys want a complete guide on every hidden unlock, by the way, let me know and I can definitely make that video. Anyway, fungus and Nukahana's is broken, especially if you get a rejuve rack, which gives 100% more healing, it becomes nutty. Some other absolutely disgusting items on the turrets are the Tesla coil and the ukulele. Both of these items are great at taking down packs due to their AOE and chaining effects, but more importantly, they proc on hit effects. Tesla and ukulele are great on everyone, but again, your turrets get them and you essentially get three times the effect of these items on the engineer and by extension three times the effect of your on hit items like sticky bombs so it's, it's just absolutely nuts place your turrets near big packs of mobs and just watch them instantly disappear trust me it's absolutely amazing hard light afterburner is also amazing on him because his utility skill which is the bubble has practically 100 percent uptime with this item it grants three charges total and reduces the cooldown of each charge so you pretty much will have a bubble up for any situation that comes around however don't rely on this too much because your bubbles will get you killed as i described above i know i've mentioned like three or four red items this point so it's good to note that you cannot rely on getting these items every run and you greatly increase your odds by simply staying alive longer or choosing good items to activate blue portals and buying the items in the bazaar etc etc so i'm really just mentioning these items because they're super powerful on the engineer not because he requires them to function in fact here in a minute i'll showcase some gameplay of a run where i literally had zero fungus in a 50 minute monsoon run i wish i was kidding to wrap up the items here the rose buckler will help you stay alive if using the sprint and attack trick i went over at the beginning and otherwise as with literally Literally all the classes in the game, mobility is amazing on him. Get yourself some goat hooves, energy drinks, and hapu feathers, and you are set. Also, I forgot to mention that backup mags aren't nearly as good on the engineer as everyone else because he essentially gets 10% of their effectiveness because he's 
starts with 10 mines and each backup mat only adds one additional mine. It doesn't give you a full 10 stacks. It's pretty sad, but honestly, it'd be a little too strong if it gave him the full 10 stacks. All right, that covers about everything I wanted to say about the engineer. If I missed anything huge or you simply have some more advice you want to give in the comments, please leave your feedback below. Also, you can catch me live at twitch.tv slash wooly gaming. It's all one word, twitch.tv slash wooly gaming. And I'll be streaming Risk of Rain 2 content there. I don't really have a set schedule as of now, but I'll be sure to advertise one if I do. Drop me a follow and you'll be notified whenever I go live anyway. Enjoy the footage of some monsoon engineer action and I'll see you guys for the next video. And hint, it covers the early game. Nice. This is perfect. So in monsoon, this is like the best start ever to get a shrine like right here. I like just started this. Ooh. Ooh, nice little sneaky syringe printer coming in. Okay. This is before I have fungus, too. This is perfect. 50 50 now. Oh, my word. The chance of that happening is, uh, well, let's see, 1 in 4, 12, 24, like 1 in 25. It just happened. Right. Oh my gosh. There we go, baby. Double mountain shrine on monsoon. Done. Right. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go. I got scammed for my third item, guys. Look at that. It's all the way on the pillar and I don't have any jumps yet. Can I eh? Gosh damn. It. Fungus. No! I just misclicked on Fungus. The first. No way. Ripperino.